Hello YouTube. So tonight I'm going to do a teardown and post-mortem dissection of the TE3 AC lithium polymer battery charger. Um, my friend was charging their airsoft batteries before a game and this charger decided to release the magic blue smoke. They had switched batteries, plugged it in, and uh, just started to walk away. Magic blue smoke, yank everything apart, and hope nothing else catches fire. So this is a dumb balance charger. When I mean it's dumb, I mean you have very limited interface and control options. You just get the ability to select between a lithium polymer, iron phosphate, and a nickel metal hydride battery, and it just tells you by three blinking LEDs um, what kind of um, status the charging is at. Um, it's got just a, a single C8 connector and it's got two JST connectors for a uh, 2S or a 3S battery so it's very limited in its options. A more modern intelligent charger um, allows you to select between your different types of batteries and you actually program in how many cells you're trying to charge and what the current limit on the charging is. Um, you have banana plugs for your main current and JST connectors for your balancing charge. Initially, I had thought maybe it's a reverse polarity situation because I haven't, I, I didn't get the chance to look at this charger before I tried to charge the batteries. Um, the battery that had caused the offending problem um, was immediately unplugged, so it never got fully charged. Then when we get to the field, it's like, oh, the battery's not charged. I'll plug it into this charger. As soon as I plug it in, it flags as reverse polarity because this is an intelligent charger it can sense when the polarity on the banana plugs is not in line with the polarity on the JST connector now with the Tamiya plugs you can get that problem the pins can come loose and you might accidentally flip them but that's not the case because you only have JST connectors so let's dive into this and see if we can figure out what went wrong um, yeah it's just a Phillips connector and cheap Chinese uh, QC path sticker on it, which means absolutely nothing because they slap those on every product without ever testing them. Um, or they do very limited function testing with no burn in tests or actual QC specs. Plugs it in, it works, hasn't caught fire, QC passed. It's uh, not the greatest view on designing to a cost because you can feel kind of the uh, quality or lack thereof. Alright, close enough. Uh, lid comes off and that's interesting. This is a 25 watt or 3 amp charger while this guy is a charger that goes up to 5 amps. You probably can't see it with the reflection but it's there, it goes up to 5 amps. Um, but on, on the intelligent charger, you can actually tell it what the charge current limit is. In this case, it just guesses, I guess? How does it even know how much current to apply to the battery? Because you're only supposed to charge at 1C max, so how does it know to not go to 3 amps when it's not necessary? That is curious, okay, let's dive into this more. Um, we got a board press fit into an enclosure because I don't see anything holding it down. Um, it's probably just press fit, so if I just do that. Alright, there's the circuit board. What do we got here? Um, looks like we have the AC side of the circuit board. Let me find some tweezers or something. Something a little bit more articulate. Alright. Here are my black tweezers so you can see them on camera. Um, it looks like this is the AC side of the board up to this transformer, or the, the high voltage side up to this transformer. Um, you've got like a little TVS um, voltage, um, transient voltage suppression here. You even have a little fuse on the input, a little rectifier to give you your high line DC voltage. Uh, some capacitors, a switching controller um, with 
with an integral MOSFET so it switches and uh, applies the AC to the buck converter. Got a diode and some capacitors to smooth out the ripple. So now we're into the DC section and they even bothered to route uh, isolation slots here. So it's not that cheaply designed but it feels like it's still designed to fit in a in a case, in a box, it's meant to fit a form factor because I'm looking at these components and they're all really tightly packed in here. You've got components stacked on top of one another. This capacitor barely fits on top of these two. I don't know if these are for transistors or voltage regulators, but let's step through this board. Um, we've got a SOIC 14 chip and what looks to be a whole bunch of analog resistors and one capacitor, maybe two. This is probably the quad op amp responsible for the um, balance voltage monitoring. We've got a STBS003F 3P6 chip. Um, that's a ST um, I'm trying to remember here. I think it's an 8-bit 16k no 8 8 bit microcontroller with like 16k of flash or something it's a pretty cheap jelly bean part it's a little programmable microcontroller um just following the traces it looks like these three transistors are all responsible for these three LEDs so we can ignore those i don't know what these two are for um what's obvious we got a big inductor here a SOIC 8 chip with three leads all in parallel, four leads all in parallel, and one lead off to the side. Um, this is going to be the switching MOSFET for the um, the voltage regulator to, for the charge voltage. So the, the buck converter here drops it down to probably something like, uh, I don't know, 12 or 24 volts or something regulated and standard. And then this buck converter between this MOSFET, this inductor, and I'm guessing that capacitor um, regulate the charging voltage for the actual um, battery itself. Now it's interesting because you've got three cells in parallel, sorry not parallel, three cells in series on these JST connectors. This pin here is going to be ground and you've only got two resistors here of 100 ohm. You've got a 10 ohm resistor here, but why would you have two cells being balanced at a, at a slower rate and one cell being balanced at a very fast rate? It doesn't make sense. So unless they're doing some kind of weird balancing combination where they can use the these two resistors to balance any two cells and these because it looks like they've got two transistors underneath each resistor, so potentially they could connect this resistor, each resistor, up to two different cells at a time, which is interesting. Uh, we've got a 10 ohm resistor that's actually a bigger 2 watt resistor. These are only 1 watt resistors, the 100 ohm resistors down here. And I think we found our culprit because I see a, I'm going to flip to the other camera here. There is our culprit right there. So you can kind of see here, underneath this 2 watt 10 ohm resistor, you've got a three-legged SOT23 component that looks like it's uh, grenaded itself and released the magic blue smoke. So what's going on there? Because you've got these two resistors that appear to be for balancing. And if I just rotate this in such a way where you can actually see it, um, each of those balancing resistors has two transistors underneath it. So I suspect, and go back to my overhead camera, I suspect that these resistors are intended to balance two of the three cells in series 
at any given time. But what is this big resistor for? It's this three-legged component's probably a transistor of some sort. It's in series with this big 2 ohm resistor. Or sorry, 2 watt resistor. 10, 10 ohm 2 watt resistor. And it's in series with the negative terminal. That's interesting. So if I draw this out actually, if I draw this out and channel my uh, inner Big Clive, um, what we've got are up to three cells for lithium in series, and then you've got the transistor. I don't know if it's an NPN or a PNP. Uh, and then the ground. So, oh, no, and I'm missing the uh, the big 10, uh, 10 ohm 2 watt resistor. So, it's almost like this is the, the charging current regulator itself. But there's still no way for it to know how big a battery you've plugged in. It doesn't make sense. There's no way for it to understand by guessing how big a battery you've plugged into it. If you plug in a small battery versus a large battery, I guess maybe the, the charge controller is observing the rise of the voltage and estimating the capacity of the battery based on how quickly it's rising. So it, it cheats in essence, but um, yeah, this is the component here that failed this transistor, whatever flavor or species, species it is. Um, there are a couple ways this could happen. The first thing that I noticed is you've got this big beefy 2 watt resistor literally folded on top of this little tiny SOT3 to um, component. So all the heat is going to cook that. Um, alternatively, the microcontroller is trying to use this in linear mode to regulate the charge current, in which case you're going to dissipate even more heat in there in linear mode. Well, sorry, I'm thinking this is a MOSFET. This is a transistor, which means it's immediately linear mode. Um, that means that the power dissipation is proportional to the current and the voltage drop across it. Voltage drop across is probably going to be in the 1 to 3 volt range. Um, so at 3, well, let's, let's say best case scenario like 1.2 volt voltage drop times 3 amps um, current you're talking about um, 5 to 6 watts plus another 2 watts on top of it so potentially if this thing is running max power it just cooked that little transistor and the rest of the circuitry could be fine it's interesting because they bothered to put in little routing slots for voltage um, isolation gaps and the components don't look particularly expensive. Um, like you got random brand Chinese capacitors, nothing brand name. It's all designed to a cost. The only expensive looking bit is this microcontroller and I bet that it's designed for the budget low cost options. So the fact that they've stacked up components that this this is folded over, these are folded over, they've put these big resistors on top of these little tiny transistors and then they put what looks to be the main charge current regulator undersized and underneath this resistor it just kind of seems like it's been engineered to a price and if it fails it fails. They test it if it works and doesn't immediately catch fire great. Um, but as far as I'm aware this was only used with a one amp hour 
uh, battery, so it's not like it was anything particularly spectacular. Um, I would imagine that if this transistor failed to short, then you would provide full charge current at 3 amps when that may be inappropriate for the battery, especially if it's fully charged. Um, I'm not sure how it's measuring the charge current, but it's probably got a resistor somewhere in here for it. Um, but yeah, there's the failed component and my suspicion is either it overheated or it's undersized for its purpose and uh, with this thing as folded in upon itself as possible it could even be a bit of both. Designed to a price and probably going to fail. So better idea just get one of these and uh, it should do you good for a long time. Uh, I think that's about it so there you go TE3 AC charger uh, buy at your own risk. No need to keep this thing around. I'm going to toss it out. Peace out.